I think um, SEOs love the intricacies of SEO, and I would say that's the one of the elements I hate. But I always think that there's a reason we're doing SEO, right? There should be a reason. Like, what company is investing in SEO because they want to do SEO? You know, it's not all about data, it's how you tell a story. And one of the problems that we had as a company when we were trying to scale the agency was we were churning too many customers at like month five or month six. What is it here? Is it the strategy? Are we bad at SEO? Like, why are they churning? One of the things I loved about the SEO was uh, the relationships where I could have with the, the companies we work with. Linkhouse, more than link building platform. Hello guys, welcome to another Linkhouse I Hate SEO podcast. Today I'm here with Adam Collins. Hello, Adam. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, but I have some hard and general question. Oh, nice. Here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, why do you hate SEO? And don't tell me you love it. No, no, I don't. No, no. I think, you know what, one of the big things, I was actually having a conversation just before with some of my guys. I think um, SEOs love the intricacies of SEO. And I would say that's the one of the elements I hate. I'm not saying that the... Um, the smaller details aren't important, but I always think that there's a reason we're doing SEO, right? There should be a reason. Like, what comp like obviously I own an agency, so what company is investing in SEO because they want to do SEO? It's like they're either trying to generate leads, they're trying to build brand awareness, they're trying to generate sales. So the big thing which I would say I hate about SEO is just the... Uh, the too much of a focus on the small technical details, you know, oh my God, the page light speed, page speed needs to be a hundred. It's and 98. Let's spend hours doing it. That's the thing I hear about and, SEO. Yeah. And you never know what's going to happen. Precisely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, tell us something about yourself, Adam, to our Polish audience mainly. Uh, who is Adam Collins? Yeah, sure. So I uh, started building websites when I was 16. Uh, I was a web developer at an agency till I was 21 and then ran a full service agency for five years. Uh, I ended up completely hating it. Um, but one of the, uh, mainly because it's very feast and famine, the agency experience from well, mine was anyway. One of the things I loved about the SEO was uh, the relationships where I could have with the, the companies we work with. Um, some of the customers genuinely I've had for 10, 12 years um, so that, that's sort of my journey in SEO. So that's why I decided in the middle of COVID just to sell my shares, restart again, and uh, use lockdown to my advantage. So I set up Ignite. We only do SEO, that's it. Um, I love my public speaking. Used to be in a band. That's pretty much it, pretty much. I'm a pretty simple guy, right? You used to be in a band? What I, kind of music? Uh, sort of like indie music, like Art of Monkeys, okay. that okay. type of like, uh, not like too heavy or anything like I that. I used to rap, so... Uh, oh, man, yeah. that's, that's got, a, got a song on the way, right? How do you like conference so far? And uh, how many times did you have, attend to, to, to Brighton and Seattle? I think it's a, it's a great event. You know, it's anything which brings um, similar-minded people together to d discuss these types of things, I think it's only going to be a net benefit. Uh, what I really like about this event, though, is the way it includes, you know, it allows people to have the opportunity to speak who may not normally have the opportunity to speak. Um, and I think... It, a lot, it sort of caters to a broader audience than some of the other SEO conferences. I love the other SEO conferences as well, but it's nice. It's like people here, you know, it's their first conference or, you know, they've got a job in SEO and it's, it's good for them to go out and listen to new ideas and speak to people, right? And make yeah. contact. So um, I went to one of my uh, employees, we went to an event last night and uh, I said to her this morning, I was like, I was really impressed with you, like network. And she was like, oh, what, was I meant to be? And I was like, no, no, for your own personal development. Like you've only been doing SEO, what, six months? You should, like she had an interest in analytics and she would speak to someone about analytics who's experienced. I was like, perfect. Like get the LinkedIn, like start chatting to them. And um, those relationships, I think invaluable because you know what? A lot of people in the SEO industry say it's quite bitchy. And I think there's certain elements which could be, but I think as the SEO industry is quite unique in the fact that People will share a lot of their information. I think if you're very humble, uh, what you said actually, like you don't come in with a big ego, I'm the big I am. If you're actually quite humble and build relationships with people, like often people will just be like, you're doing this wrong, change this, do that. So yeah, I think I think it's a great industry and a great event for sure. Yeah, and networking is uh, you know a big part of every, uh, every conference. And for me personally, I think this is the most important part because 100%. of course the speeches will be quite similar. Yeah. Speakers will be quite similar on the European conference. Yeah. So if you want to attend on, you know, every event, 
he would be like, yeah, I said, I already seen that guy in the, the same speech, sure. you know, a month ago. But if you are really, really into networking stuff, uh, you can, you know, you can, uh, you can learn a lot of things. Oh, I learned a ton. Yeah. Uh, at the last SEO Brighton, sat in the bar on the Friday at like one, one or two p.m. onwards, and then just sat there drinking and start chatting to people. And you go, actually, there's some super, super smart people here. So yeah, I'm a big believer of networking in a bar for sure what a life yeah what a life uh yeah so uh maybe you have some talks some speeches that are on your priority <laughs> list during the conference uh, i need to have a browse through to be honest i had to block all of today off okay. for um <laughs> to try and finish my presentation to be honest with you so um but yeah i think anything around um analytics our guys are trying to get a lot better at focusing on specific kpis um for customers and, and actually digging into data a lot more now um, and then i've asked my guys to go to the international seo ones as well because we've started signing up global customers which is pretty exciting but it's something which we we've got limited experience in it so i'm, I'm getting them them guys to do the reconnaissance on that as well amazing amazing so can you give us uh, some sneak peek of your speech yeah for sure so my uh, speech, in some ways, it's a play on the fact that, so it sounds extremely technical. It's like, uh, so the, the speech is on um, creating visual topical maps, for, uh, creating visual topical maps from your Cuba research data. Um, so it sounds super technical, and it is. There's bits of AI in there. But actually, it's very simplistic, and it's targeted towards the freelancer or the agency owner. And the real purpose of the talk, or the undertone of the talk is, you know, it's not all about data, it's how you tell a story. And one of the problems that we had as a company when we were trying to scale the agency was we were churning too many customers at like month five or month six. And we started being uh, looking inwards and going, well, what is it here? Is it the strategy? Are we bad at SEO? Like, why are they churning? And we came to the conclusion it was simply the way that our customers was, were perceiving the campaigns. You know, they're very excited at the start. You know, you do the strategy, you start getting some traffic increases, but by month five or six, the director or the CEOs go into that marketing manager or CMO, where's this? They promised the world, what's this? And then they churn. So one of the things that we did was we went, well, how do we restructure the Cuba research data and the, the, the topical maps we do? But how do we create something very interactive? So it's all about how we, we restructure that data and create visual topical maps for customers. Very, very simple to do. It takes about 15, 20 minutes. Um, it's already, you've already got the data anyway, but the point of that is that then you get your customers bought in. So then you say, look, this topical cluster you wanted to be an expert on is 40% of the way down there, right? There's these 15 or 20 pages, which still need to be created. You know, that's going to take us another six to nine months. But as each month goes by, they see, they see, they're seeing the progress. They're see they're visually being able to see the progress and also Oftentimes they'll say, "Well, actually, can we go at a faster rate? Can we spend more money and do it?" So the point of the topical mat, uh, the point of the talk is towards agency owners and freelancers. Pretty much going back to the original point, which I said, which is like cut the BS a little bit. Stop. The customer doesn't care about the technical stuff to a certain extent. Like, how can we communicate with customers more effectively uh, and stop them churning up, like, or stop them leaving after three, four months? Yeah, that's yeah. the purpose of the talk. Yeah, we, I think this is this is the clue also in terms of relationship with the client. You don't need to boost your ego with, you know, yeah, I'm a specialist. I need to, you know, yeah. go with, you know, mm -hmm. all the complicated things. Yeah. So uh, make it simple. Um, I think this is a good idea. So let's talk more about keyword mapping. How do we start with it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we have a very simplistic approach. We like to look, so everything we do from a, a website point of view is topic down. And we try and do that in respect of even for existing or new customers. So if they've not got a website, or if they've got a very simplistic website, we'll do that. So what really what we want to be trying to do initially is doing true keyword research in regards to that specific topic. So we want to understand the top of the funnel keywords, you know, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. Based on that, I'm not going to lie, like we could say we'd use some technical, I personally use Keyword Insights. I don't know whether you've got any experience with Keyword Insights. Not, not, not especially, but... Uh, yeah, so Andy Chadwick use. runs that, and we yeah. used to do it by hand. It, and that's what I mean, it's quite simplistic. It's a fantastic tool. It analyzes the data, analyzes who's on page one for those keywords. It clusters a lot of the keywords for you already. Um, I would say it's 90-ish percent accurate, 85 to 90 percent. I would never give that to a customer. Um, if you're a... Uh, 
if you have your own e-commerce brand or affiliate brand, yeah, you could work straight from that tool. You wouldn't even need to do the second element. Because we work with customers, we need it to be extremely accurate. But they have an awesome mapping feature in that, which will map the uh, keyword clusters to pages. So it does a lot of the hard work. And then really what we will always do is just go through and sanity check it. So making sure that the right pages are mapping. The big thing with now is, uh, so I was speaking to someone yesterday actually, and they have this huge site, DR80, you know, gets lots of traffic. They're really, really big company. And they're like, why are we not ranking for this keyword? And like, I pulled up on the sales call and like, there's someone ranking in like the top one or two with like DR10, proper bog standard article. And like I was saying to her, I was like, just the intent of the page is wrong. Like all of the pages on page one were blogs and he's trying to rank a corporate page. And I was just like, we could literally, and that whole mapping of is something which is so important. I think more important now than ever is just making sure that the intent of the pages match okay, so, what you want to do. Yeah. So, so tell me, what are the you know most common mistakes SEOs make when developing a keyword map? Yeah, I think so. Obviously, there's that co the the concept of like topical coverage, topical authority is like brandish around a lot now, and it is a really good buzzword. Um, I think we can go like too far with that though. And then obviously for, oftentimes I find um, a lot of clients, they're trying to do similar things, but they're just going after keywords. You know, there's no real purpose of that keyword. It's, it's too much of a stretch, but they think they have to produce content on it because they need to fulfill the topical map. So I would say like an over, um, yeah, and uh, they've, they've sort of went too far in regards to, I think they're trying to do the right things, but it's like, it's too much of a stretch. So I would, um, especially with like the rise of AI as well and AI content, I think it's more important that, yeah, you do cover a topic in its entirety. Um, you push people down the funnel to try and get conversions. Um, but also as well, like you don't create content for the sake of creating content. Like there's no point having multiple pages trying to target one singular keyword. And that's the big thing which we see when we take on a customer and they've had an agency who've been trying to do this is like they have massive cannibalization issues between yeah. their pages. So um, yeah, that would be like my, my I would say that the big mistake which I see people is like two, going too far with it, if that makes sense. Okay, okay. So uh, can you recommend some tool, some tools for keyword mapping or uh, cluster visualization? Yeah, for sure. So I, like I was saying before, the, the Keyword Insights is, is awesome. Um, it does a lot of the uh, mapping for you, so you just need to sanity check it. I always like having a human sanity check it, personally. Um, uh, for visualization, I mean, we use a really, really simple piece, a piece of software called MindMeister. It's like 14 pounds per month or something. It's like just a mind map software. But again, it's like, it's how you use these t simple technologies. But I think the true beauty of that tool is the, sh the fact that it's shareable. So like the links are shareable so your customer can get in, they can edit things, they can approve things. But um, it's such a simple tool. And the best thing is there's like a simple import to it. So that's in my talk, I said, look, if we format your keyword research in this format, here are the prompts using AI, which will take your keyword research, we'll drop it in, we'll create a TXT mm -hmm. file with all the data and then literally two seconds import. And then you've got an awesome little visual topical map for customers to get bought into. Um, I think one of the problems which a lot of SEOs have, but they do all this work creating these crazy topical maps and they send it to them in like a Google sheet. And they're just like, they're just so overwhelmed by it. Um, and that's really what we're trying to do is like, how do you leverage simple, cheap solutions and get a higher ROI from the fact like, you, we don't need to build a mad tool in-house to be able to do this when there's something there for 14 pounds per month or even nine pounds per month, it might be. So um, yeah, that would be my recommendation, like those two tools. The other tool actually I would recommend is uh, Julius AI. So we use Julius AI for all the, um, any sort of data prep or data analysis, we've found that it's it's so much better than ChatGPT for that. Okay. Um, it's a very, very, so all the data prep which we do is via Julius AI, it's, it's very, very good. It's a good tool. Okay, okay, interesting things. So how do you make sure that all content is properly aligned to proper keyword? Yeah, so this is, I guess it comes down to the content as well. So one of the things we struggled for a while with, I'll be honest, we had an awesome content writer and then I promoted it to our ops manager over time. Replacing her as the manager was so hard and we went through so many people. We've now got a very, very good content manager there. I think it comes down to, again, having someone who really is a, understands content. Um, 
from an SEO point of view, but is genuinely a real enthusiast regarding content and having them built into the strategy as well. Those guys speaking to the customer, understanding what the products is, understanding what they do, what they don't do. And then working with someone who's more strategy-based to do the keep of research, to do the mapping, to omit pages which shouldn't be there, to add pages which should. Because the problem is with keyword research, as you will probably know, is you know, Ahrefs will say something has zero key but hits per month, but there will be search volume there. And that's the problem with just doing keyword research from tools like Ahrefs alone mm -hmm. and not taking into consideration the customer and the business is a lot of keywords will come up with no search volume. But they are then often those keywords are like bottom of the funnel people ready to convert so again i would say it's that understanding of the business um and that's what i try and get my guys to do is be like you know great for seos but we should be thinking like business people as well i think that it's crucial to um to align keywords with user you know intent yep uh we've been talking about it with helen Yellens as well uh, recently. So how do we make sure that keyword map to specific pages uh, do just that? And how can we see SEOs uh, check whether that's true? Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that we do when we're creating the topical maps is the intent checking as, as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's ways you can do it through AI. Obviously, you can uh, ask it to analyze the top, you know, four or five pages and, you know, um, and, and to give you a breakdown, again, tools like Keyword Insights will do that. We ensure that it's put onto the topical map as well. Um, and we have, to, we have teams of people before they're writing the article who go through and they check that. When the person launches the article, they check the intent again. Um, but yeah, I, to be honest, I'm sure there's... We, I'm still a big believer when it comes to things like that, like a quick check from a human is the most effective way of doing that, right? Okay, okay. So how do you handle sites covering multiple topics? Yeah, so we so the way we work with our agency is we sell keyword research based on topic. So we because we we say to our customers we're to, we're like a topic down approach. We have a topic down approach. Um, <clears throat> if the customer wants additional topics, um, we'll we'll build them separately for that based on the campaign, and then we do the same concept together. It's like right, what are the top of the funnel? Well, the middle of the funnel. What's the bottom of the funnel? You know, what's the sales cycle? How are customers going to convert? How are we going to push people down the funnel? What are the, what are the USPs, why people would buy? So we try and understand each topic um, sort of onto its own. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we, we're big believers as well of like trying to fill, fulfill a full topic before trying to move on to something else. Like if we can do that, it's better. Um, we find we have better results. But um yeah, I just start building out, start building out content. I mean, the, you, you, you'll know, like most, I think a lot of people have like, uh, they procrastinate and uh, you know, oh, the topical map has to be perfect, but nothing will give you, you know, more feedback than starting to launch content, seeing how it performs, tweaking that content and building it over time. So um, yeah, the sooner we get to it and start producing content, the better basically. Yeah, so in summary, let's uh, look for, you know, s sectors for uh, optimization, but yeah. don't forget about manual work that, you yeah. know, that should be done. Search intent and keyword relevance uh, can shift with time. So how do we make sure that our maps stay up to date? Yeah, well, the good thing about having a visual map is the fact that it's, we, we have a live, we um, <clears throat> use it as a live file. So we'll always, and the client's got interaction with that as well. I think the recent Google leak as well shows how important um, keeping content refreshed is. And we actually did some um, tests recently and uh, it was a pretty competitive keyword as well. It was SEO for solicitors. We were bottom of page one, hadn't been updated in, you know, two years or whatever. Just going in, doing some basic content expansion, <clears throat> looking at the intent. Um, we were missing certain headings, missing certain phrases. Refreshed it, updated the published date, and literally within a week, it's like position one now. And we just want a massive client from it as well. And I was, so I started saying to my team about this in regards to the importance of, um, you know, what just because a piece of content ranks one year doesn't mean it's going to rank the next year. Yes. So sure. every year we, well, we start every um, project with a, like a, a content audit, um, uh, which is really important across the whole site. And we try and do that at least once every 12 months okay. um, because that will give us good data on, you know, how was it performing last year? You know, how's it performing this year? You know, what are blogs, what are landing pages? Yeah. It, it, you know, is it going down? Is it going up? And then we try and highlight ones um, 
either every year um, or at least every quarter, we'll drop in and start looking at right, what are the worst performing pages from the last quarter and start to look, has the intent changed? And again, the best way to do that is by loading up Google and seeing, right? Have the, I mean, we just have a simple, you know, if there's 10 listings on page one, how many are landing pages, how many are blogs, how many are location, you know, um, how many are like Amazon or whatever, and then just work out the ratios based on that. So now you're trying to re refresh it uh, in some way yeah. every year. Oh, uh, and if you are creating uh, stuff now, for example, you're trying to make it more evergreener. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So we, so we have like a, we, we have a, we call it quick wins for existing pages, but yeah, that's what we're pretty much trying to do is go into old content, refresh it, add 500 words, 750 words, add some headings, add some missing phrases. There's a very, very good tool, which my friend uh, Joe Davies launched called Spindrift, mm -hmm. which is a really, really awesome tool. It sits in your browser as well. It's just like, it's just a very easy way of using search console data so that you can look at a page and go, Right, these like five to 10 keywords are on page, bottom of page one, top of page two. We haven't even included it in our page. Like very quick solutions that we can do, just pop it in for a few times to get ranking increases. So um, yeah, it's what, the problem is with an agency is that you've only got so much resource. That's the other issue. So it's trying to, I guess, do activities which give the highest net benefit to the campaign. So um, yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to ask you about the enterprise size sites yeah. with thousands of pages. Yeah. Um, how to handle that kind of things? Um, any scaling techniques and how not to miss a keyword opportunity? Yeah, it's a really good point because it's where, obviously what I was saying before with this topic down approach, it's where sometimes it can fall short. And I don't mean in respects to that it's the wrong strategy. I mean, in regards to we're only an agency of 15 people, right? With the if you're working with enter enterprise customers, you don't have the we don't have the level of resource to go through and do these massive audits. And we just ha recently had one now, and they were working with a big agency, paying a lot of money. And you know, they're four five, they were four or five months into the campaign, and all they've got is just this oversized content audit. You know, and they were looking at it like we don't know what to do with this because they have so many pages. So we try and break it down with the same thing for customers, which is right. Let's do a content audit on the site. Um, site wide, let's figure out what are the worst performing pages. Do we, should we get rid of them? Shall we merge them? Shall we improve them? You know, obvious technical issues, right? Let's get them sorted. But then after that, right, what are the key topics the customer wants to focus on? Right. And then we focus on those areas of the site. So we start trying to break those massive existing sites down into to topic areas. And then we want to understand what existing assets do they have on the site in that topic and where are their gaps? And that's really what we try and do with our customers. So we go, right, you've covered 50 or 60% of that topic. What there's these 20, 30 or 40 of the pages which we could add to fulfill that topic. So that's really where existing content audits are, I suppose, so important. But we try and always have this philosophy of like, we don't want a scattergun approach. It's just not the way we work. We want, you know, if this specific topic's important here, we want to like really dig deep into that topic. Okay, so can you share some uh, tips on site-wide content audits? Uh, yeah. Maybe what metrics or indicators should we look on? Yeah, sure. So the best, uh, most effective way I've found of doing content audits is we use Scream and Frog. So we have a spreadsheet. I'm happy to give the spreadsheet if you want. Uh, I actually did a video going through how we do these audits. Um, again, I'm happy to share it. Um, what we do, we use Screaming Frog. Screaming Frog has some awesome APIs. You just link the sync up to Ahrefs, uh, Search Console Analytics. Um, we export all of that data out for the last three months. And we have a spreadsheet format for all of that, which we, we drop into. It's very easy to do. But really where I feel like we excel is we take, we then use Ahrefs and we scrape all the keywords on the site and export it. Um, and uh, then we use AI, the Julius tool again, mm -hmm. to map the two spreadsheets together. So then what you've got is you have this content audit, but then also you have all the Ahrefs data as well in regards to mm -hmm. the main keyword, the search finds, the secondary keywords, the keyword difficulty. That makes it really amazing. And the reason why that's amazing is because you can then start to go through and go, right, these these uh, key, these pages, they have massive, massive benefit. Like, there's massive potential for these specific pages. Um, and then we can start targeting those. Um, so that would be like a, a recommendation. And it's quite hard to obviously say it over a uh, podcast, but I, I can, I'm happy to share like a, a 
breakdown video of, of going through that. Right. But it's a very, very effective deliverable. Um, and I feel like people don't like reauditing their site because it's often a pain, you know. What about internal linking? Um, yeah. Any good strategies around? The true beauty of the visual topical map is you can really go into, so again, in a spreadsheet, it's very hard to visualize internal linking. With a visual topical map, especially if it's out in front of you, it becomes very, very simplistic for you to be able to see the relationships between pages uh, and to be able to say, right, these four pages are uh, in its own little cluster. And you can start using these um, topical maps to build mini silos. That's what we um, we would do. Um, I really like sort of the sort of the standard reverse silo. I think I've seen uh, Carl Roof speak about it in the past. Um, I think it's the reverse. I'm trying to trying to think off the top of my head. Uh, but you, yeah, just making sure fundamentally that the um, sub pages or the supporting pages all internally linked to each other. They all link back to the parent page. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean that's we try and keep it as simple as we can. You can um, if you have a list of all your pages uh, that you want to in a topic. Uh, another really easy thing is to just you know drop it into ChatGPT. Say these are all the pages on this uh, what we're going to do, and just say um, can you uh, log each page needs at least say three internal links or should have a maximum of three links and no less than say two links. Can you create a logical internal linking structure to uh, to link all these pages together? And that will do all the job for you. And then you just need someone manually to go and do it. So that's a very, very simplistic way of doing it as well. But if we can make it, you know, uh, in an automated way, we, yeah, well, let's, 100%. let's look, yeah, let's look for that kind of things. One of the problems which I've had in the past was, so we used a uh, link whisper, which is by the way, a really, really good WordPress plugin. Um, and if you use it carefully and know what you're doing, I think it's very effective. However, okay. When, what we found was is that people start getting very lazy with it. Um, and especially when people are just, there's suggestions here, suggestions there, you know, people start including internal links here, internal links there, which shouldn't really be internal links. Then it all becomes a bit of a mess. So that's why we we then took a step back and said, look, those, those tools are great. And they're very good at like seeing how many internal links the page is and, in, and doing it. But again, you can't beat the sanity check of either using AI or whatever and looking through and going, does this logically make sense? Is this a logic user, a logical user journey? Um, and then, yeah, and then implementing it. So it's definitely, I mean, I think internal link is probably the most underestimated and most powerful way of boosting pages, right? But it's uh, it's it's usually a real pain to organize, i found. Yeah, and you have to have, to has, you know, the pages to link in from. Precisely. And then the big problem is as well, if you're an agency, is having the processes to, when you publish those pages, to remember that you have to go back to those pages and put the internal links in. Yeah. So it's uh, it's something that, yeah, it's, it's, this is such a, one of those tasks where it has massive benefit, but it is a pain. It is a pain, especially on large sites. Okay. So the very last question, because you need to prepare for tomorrow, three most important things to remember about keyword mapping. Keyword mapping. I think the intent for sure, like there's no point trying to rank for specific keywords if the intent's wrong. It doesn't matter how much you force it. Um, I think um, keeping it simple, using tools, which will take a, a lot of the legwork out for you and uh, keeping it simple like that. So again, if a tool can go through and be 90% accurate, you just need to go through and sanity check it. Um, and uh, I suppose not to, don't try and do too much too quickly, you know, like, especially with big sites, I think everyone's so obsessed with, you know, like these macro changes at which will take massive, like just start as simple. And, you know, if you do, you know, five pages a day or 10 pages or whatever, and just start restructuring your site over the course of time, it doesn't need to be in one massive update. So that I would say they'll probably like three simplest um, recommendations. Okay. Uh, brilliant. So I think we we have it. So thank you for your time. Pleasure. It was amazing. A lot of interesting thoughts. Uh, I think it'll be useful for many, many people. So don't forget to like our video, subscribe our channel, and don't forget to follow other episodes of I Hate SEO uh, podcast and uh, follow Adam Cole's SEO on LinkedIn. And uh, I hope see you, see you, Adam, and see you guys on the Brighton SEO next edition. So thank you once again. That's it. Cheers. Cheers, mate.